So let's begin. So uh, we're going to talk about exponential growth and decay. Um, like I said, we're going to spend a little while with applications, right? So we learned about derivatives, how to compute them. Now we're applying them to stuff. Um, this one, we're not going to use derivatives, not so much derivatives are involved here, but we're not going to directly compute them. But this is a type of a problem type that you should know how to deal with. Um, exponential growth and decay. So this one's very applicable. Marginal functions really apply a lot to economics, but this one not only applies to economics, but it applies to a lot of the sciences, actually, exponential growth and decay. A lot of things grow exponentially. So um, let's first of all talk about what that is. Uh, so a quantity undergoes exponential growth if it changes at a rate proportional to its current size. So this distinguishes exponential growth from another very important type of growth called linear growth. Linear growth just means it's always growing by a fixed amount. It's always growing by like 10 items, right? So every week we increase by 10. Um, exponential growth happens when it grows proportional to its current size. So it would be, i.e., growing or dec decreasing by a percentage amount. Right? So you can't say it's always growing by a certain value. You can say it's growing by a certain percentage. Um, it's growing by a fixed percentage, so you can say it's always adding 10%. It's very different from saying it's always adding 10 units. So 10%, it gets bigger when the, the size that you're looking at is bigger. So whenever something is growing proportional to its current size or it's growing by a percentage value, we say it's growing exponentially. Likewise, growing by decay, uh, decaying exponentially. So that's all that means. Um, growing by a fixed percentage amount, um, I think mentioned that here as well. Um, now there are certain equations that we know govern these guys. So let's look at growth. <coughs> so if P of T is the amount of the quantity. Um, P grows exponentially. If the rate, right, is what this says, the rate, it grows at a rate, is proportional to the current size, which means it's just a constant times the current size, which we usually call R. So this here, this is called a differential equation, that's what it's called. It's called a differential equation because it's an equation with a derivative in the equation. Um, and we can solve this. Now, at this point, we don't know how to solve this. Um, you would solve it using integration, which is something that we learned towards the end of the semester. But you could solve the differential equation. By solving the differential equation, that just means rewriting the equation so that there are no derivatives, because I don't want to have derivatives in it. So we can solve this uh, to get that p is going to be equal to p naught e to the rt. So e is the usual number e that we're used to. p naught is going to be the initial value of the substance or quantity or whatever you're measuring. Um, and yeah, so that is the equation. So that is the equation for exponentially. Now, you're going to have to 
have these two memorized, but uh, that's, those are the equations that are going to be important. And we're going to derive a couple more equations that are important. So here, like I said, P equals the current amount at time T. Not is your initial amount or whatever you started with. Um, your R, this guy is called your growth constant. Or it's also called relative growth rate. And it's pretty much the percentage amount, the percentage amount. The same percentage I mentioned before in decimal form. You can think of it that way. Uh, T is time in whatever unit. So depending on the question, you might have time being measured in different units. Just make sure you're paying attention. Uh, you read the problem you know what uh, units of time you should be using. So those are all the, those guys. P prime is what's called the growth rate. Or rate of change. Now this is important because there are, there is a possibility, rate of change of P, of mixing up the R and the P in a problem because they both have the word growth in the name of the variable. So there's a difference between a growth constant and a growth rate and a relative growth rate versus just a rate of change. This, the, the, the phrases are very similar but they are referring to different things. These two phrases specifically refer to the little r in your formula. Well these phrases specifically refer to the P prime in your formula. That's going to be important. So if there's a word problem and you see like the phrase growth constant or relative growth rate, you should know what that's talking about. Right? It's not the, you have to know what that's talking about. Right? So th those are how we call them. That's how they're phrased. Um, now, one thing that's important uh, is sometimes we'd like to know how long it takes to grow by a certain value. Now, something that's very common is to know, want to know, how long it takes to double. So, so if you know that something is growing exponentially, how long does it take to double in its current size? Time to double. So I'll be referring to this as T subscript D here. And <coughs> what that means is um, I started out with P naught. Um, this is e to the r, and when my t hits this value, td, time to double, uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to have double of what I started with. So that's going to mean you can divide both sides by p naught. Then uh, to solve for the time to double, you can ln both sides. That's going to kill the e. And so I would get the time to double is ln2 over r. That's going to be an important equation. This is time to double. So if someone tells you uh, what percentage amount something is changing by, or if they give you the growth constant or the relative growth rate, you can figure out the time to double um, by this equation. It's going to be ln2 over r. Conversely, if you know what r is, and you can also find the time to you can also solve for r if you're given the time to double. So we can also talk about, uh, you could have a word problem where it says, oh, we were watching this thing, we know it's growing exponentially, and we realized that it doubled in 10 days. What is the fixed percentage that it's growing by? You can use this equation. Right? So again, this is something that you can derive. Uh, but it's just nice to actually just know this equation right off the bat. Time to double ln2 over r. Um, you can also realize that if we're somewhere to ask time to triple, uh, you would have a 3 here instead of a 2, and you'll get ln3 over r. Time to quadruple ln4 over r. So whatever they ask, 
how long does it take to have this many times what you started with is going to be ln of that many times divided by r. So that's a general principle, but doubling time is specifically um, requested or want to know it all the time. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. So in the handout I gave you, these equations are all in a box, and I also typed out what these guys mean. Um, decay is very similar. So decay is just when the quantity decreases. at a fixed percentage amount. Decreases proportional to its current size. Now, decreases simply means that your growth rate is negative. So, that is how you would set that guy up. Um, so decreasing derivative negative. So you have to remember that little negative sign in front of here. And I'm going to show you how the equations will actually uh, change. Decreasing. Derivative is negative. That. Now, you can solve this. We can solve this. You will end up with P equals P naught E to the minus RT. Now, a very common thing to ask, and the interpretation of P, P naught, and all that, it's all the same as I had here. So p is the current size at time t. You can think of this as p of t. It's a function. p naught is the initial amount that you started with. r is going to be the growth constant. t is going to be time. e is Euler's number. Um, now, when something's decreasing, something that's very common uh, to measure this by is a term called half-life. That's something that you'll see in science classes a lot. Right? So in biology and chemistry, the half-life of some substance is often something that we want to know about. So let's call this T sub H. This is the time uh, taken to have half of what you started with. So oftentimes you have something that's decaying, usually like radioactive substances, for example, or carbon-12 or whatever. You have some substance that you're being measured, and over time, it decreases over time by a fixed percentage amount. And if it's decreasing exponentially, as radioactive substances and a lot of other substances tend to do, um, we often want to measure how fast this decay happens in terms of something that we call half-life, the time for you to have half of what you started with. This, of course, would mean uh, if you started with P0 and it came to a point where you had half of what you started with, that's the time, then you have half of what you started with at that time value. If you divide both sides by P0, uh, you can ln both sides. So you would end up with your half life is minus ln of a half over R. However, you can realize that um, Lots of ways to think of ln of a half. I could have think of ln of a half as ln of 1 minus ln of 2. ln of 1 is 0. So this here is equal to minus ln of 2. And then I multiply by minus. So again, I get ln 2 over r. So that's the time to have half of what you started with. Time to have a third of what you started with, ln 3 over r. Time to have a quarter of what you started with, ln 4 over r, etc. Um, but that's going to be the half-life equation. So now if I tell you, oh, there's a radioactive substance, um, its half-life is, you know, 5,300 years, tell me about how much I would have in T 
2,000 years if I start with this amount. What you would need to do is you would set up this equation, plug in 5,300 here, solve for your r, you're going to plug in your r here, and you'll be able to use that equation. So, all this is written down on the thing, but I just kind of wanted to rant about how they would come up, where the formulas came from, and how you would think about them. What we're going to do now is we're going to go through a bunch of examples. Just to get used to this, um, shouldn't be too complicated stuff. But yeah, like I said, all the equations are here. Um, the What I call each equation, it's also listed here. Because in a word problem, I might ask you for a specific equation. And I will use these phrases. Um, another phrase that you might see is a phrase called compounded continuously. It's equivalent to saying growing exponentially. It's exactly the same thing. So anything compounding continuously uses the exponential growth formula. Other than that, once you know that something is growing proportional to its current size or it's changing by a fixed percentage amount, you know it's an exponentially changing quantity, these two boxes become relevant. If it's increasing and growing, you use this box. Uh, if it's decreasing or decaying, you use this box. But other than that, we're just going to use these equations. Um, we actually don't need to know a lot of calculus here, even though technically it is in here, but we don't actually know all the calculus needed to actually um, derive all of these formulas. But here's what some typical problems would look like. So it'll usually be something like this. I'll give you a few phrases that will indicate to you that we're, we're looking at something that's growing or decaying exponentially. Then I'll ask you a few problems, four or five problems on that thing. Um, you will tend to want to find the equation, the general equation for the quantity first. And once you have that equation, you can actually answer any question you want. So let's actually go through the handouts. And answer some of these questions. So, and that. Example one. Okay, so we're gonna read. Let PMT be the current size of a population of a colony of bacteria. Okay. So it's also known that populations tend to grow exponentially. Um, the more people there are, the more babies they have. So the, the larger the population is, the larger the percentage that it's going to grow by, the larger the amount it's going to grow by. Um, it's going to grow by a fixed percentage. So, um, so you have a colony of bacteria. At 10 a.m., you notice that there are 50 of them. By 3 p.m., there are 350 of them. So in three hours, it grew by 300 strong. Assuming the rate of growth of the population is proportional to its current size, that phrase is what tells you exponential growth. So you know it's exponential growth because it's in a handout called exponential growth. But on a test, you're not going to know it's exponential growth. So this phrase, though, is what's going to tell you that. So on a test where there are a bunch of other word problems, how do you know you're looking at an exponential growth problem? Um, this phrase, proportional to its current size. This means exponential change. So whenever you see that phrase, that's what it, that means. Right? So I'm not going to tell you, hey, this is an exponential growth and decay problem. No, it's, it's like it's just going to be a word problem. And it will actually say something like, oh, something's changing proportional to its current size. Or it's going to say, something is changing by a fixed percentage amount. Or it's going to mention the word half-life in there sometimes. Oh, we have a radioactive substance, and this is its half-life. Um, things of that sort that indicates to you, okay, it's, it's an exponential growth or decay problem. Okay. Now, obviously, because the you're going from 50 to 350, it's a growth problem. So that means the top box is now relevant to this problem, just by you reading that phrase. Okay. So now that you realize that, uh, let's go to A. What is the relative growth rate of the population? What is relative growth rate asking about? What are they asking us to find? R. So I see you find little r. OK. So given this information, how would you go about finding little r? Yeah? How would it be 350? 
plus 15 each for our high school. Right. So again, you know that the top box is relevant. We have this memorized once you realize it's an exponential growth. Okay, so I know these equations. So I'm going to want an equation that has R in it, for which I know all the other information. Now, in this top box, you'll notice that I know several equations with R in it. P prime equals RP. I don't know about P prime, so that's not going to help. Uh, TD equals R ln2 over R. Don't know what the time to double is, so that's not going to help. Um, but this equation also has R in it, P equals P naught E to the RT. And I would, based on what was the information I was given, I actually know everyone else in this guy except R. I do know that I started out with 50. That's what the problem said. At 10 a.m. there were 50. And I eventually it grew to 350. And we know that there was a certain amount of time that passed here. So at 10 a.m. there were 50, at 3 p.m. there were 350, so I can say at 4. So measure time measured in hours here. So that's my equation. Um, I can now solve for r. How do I solve for r? Ten to three. Ten to three. Yes, that's five. Wow, good one. Good one. Yeah. I, I thought that growth rate was p prime and that growth constant was r. No, relative <laughs> growth rate is r. Okay. Yeah, that was one of the phrases. But yes, you definitely want to be careful with. Yeah. So it says here, you see, r. Yeah. Growth constant, decay constant, sometimes called the relative growth rate. So once they use the word relative there, it's talking about the R. Um, how would I solve this for R? So we get to this equation. Yeah? You can divide by 50. Divide by 50. That's 7 equals e to the 5 R. Use logs to get rid of exponentials. And so your r is equal to ln 7 over 5. And it's a word 5, but that's ln 7 over 5. That's your relative growth rate. Now, in part b, it says find a formula for the p of t. So P of T is the current size of the, po the population of bacteria. So let's find a formula for it. So we know that P of T equals P naught E to the R T. That's the growth formula. Now, the P, that's like your Y value, right? So that's the output. So that's going to stay as a P. The T is like your input, right? P of T. T is like your input, so that's like the SI. That's going to stay in the formula. You need to fill in the P naught and the R. So that's all you're going to do. P of T equals 50 E to the ln of 7 over 5 T. And that's it. That's the answer. C. What is the size of the population at 4 P? means your time is 6. So you just want the size, which is p, at 6. So it's going to be 50 e to the ln of 7 over 5 times 6. And that's that. Nothing else to do here. Nothing else to see here. OK, what is the rate of growth at 4? rate of growth refers to
rate of growth. Kind of like a rate of change, but we call it a rate of growth. Now, of course, the difference between that and this guy is that this guy is the relative one. This one is just the overall one, the overall for the population. So it's P prime. And we know for these problems, P prime is equal to R times P. So at 4 p.m., this means, again, T equals 6. So this is going to be, we want P prime evaluated at 6. This is going to be R times P evaluated at 6. So R is ln of 7 over 5 times A of 6. I don't care about simplifying too much. I just care that you know how to read the question and how to use the right equation to answer the question. Um, e. When will the population be? solve for t. Hmm. I.e., if you want p of t equals 1,500, and solve for t. Right? The when means time. So this is asking about time. So we know from step part b that p of t is equal to 50 e to the ln of 7 over 5 times t. So I want to know when will this population actually hit 1,500 if I started at 50. So I can divide these guys, so it's 150 over 5. This is ln of 7 over 5 times t. I want to find that t. So that goes 30 times. So I can ln both sides, ln of 30 is going to be ln of 7 over 5 times t. So my t is going to be 5 ln of 30 over ln of 7. And it's pretty much as simple as we can get it here. So, sorry. Questions? Try problem two. I'll give you guys five minutes for problem two. Let's see if you know how to use these equations. Um, but that's it. Five minutes, then we'll go over it together.
Let's see what we got. The half-life of a radioactive substance is 30 years. Suppose you start with 200 milligrams of this substance. P of T is the mass remaining after T years. So that phrase half-life, radioactive, indicates to you exponential decay. So A, find the differential equation for this situation. What is that? Yeah. P prime equals negative R P. P prime equals negative R P. Now, of course, if they said find this equation, that's just a general formula for the equation. So when they say find the equation, basically what they want you to know is they want you to be able to plug in R. How did you find R here? Yeah. Uh, you used the equation for the half-life, mm -hmm. so it would be ln 2 over 30. Half-life equals ln 2 over R. This means ln 2 over 30. This means, of course, your R, uh, this 30 equals ln 2. This means 30 equals ln 2 over R. So yes, your R is going to be ln 2 over 30. And so your differential equation is P prime equals minus ln 2 over 30 times p. This is called the differential equation once you fill in the r value. So b, find a formula for p of t. How did you do that? Yeah? I did p of t equals 200 times p to the negative element 2 over t. Because we know that P of T is equal to P naught E to the minus RT when we have exponential decay. Um, 200 is the initial amount. We're told we start with a 200 milligram sample. And we found the R in part A. So I just plug that in. And so that's our value. Yeah. C. How much will remain after 75 years? Equation of plug in 75 for t. Yep. That's it. This is just asking for p of 75. That's 200 e to the minus ln 2 over 30 times 75. That's your answer. D. How long before you have 1 milligram left? current amount is 1, and you want the time. So you set 1 to be the current amount if I started with 200. I want to find what is the t value that will cause that to happen. And so how do you solve that for t? Divide by 200. Mm -hmm. 1 over 200 equals equals e to the minus ln 2 over 30 t, then ln of 1 over 200 equals minus ln 2 over 30 t. Then I can solve for t. I would multiply by minus 30, and then divide. 
divide by the element 2. So I have that. In fact, you can notice that this is 30 ln of 200 over ln 2. That's going to be in years, whatever that is. Um, right, and that's because I know that my ln of 1 over 200 is actually the same as ln of 1 minus ln of 200. ln of 1 is 0. So it's just minus ln of 200. And then this negative times that gives you the positive here. Um, you can also notice that ln of 1 over 200 is just the same as ln of 200 to the minus 1 power. But I can bring the minus 1 power down. So I get minus ln of 200. A couple ways to know that. So that I can remove the 1 over and just kill the negative sign. So now it looks like your t looks nice and positive. ln of 2 and ln of 200 is positive, so that answer actually makes sense. E. What is the... Uh, Rate of growth at the time there's one milligram remaining. Well, you know about rate of growth. That is just minus R, P, and I know what R is, it's ln 2 over 30, and we're told that the remaining is 1, so it's just minus <coughs> ln 2 over 30. stop there. Try the third one for next time. Uh, next time we'll have a quiz covering everything up to exponential growth and decay after the first test. So we'll do that. Also, I, I posted the, uh, the solutions to the test. So what I would suggest is if you got below, let's say, a 70 on the test, Remember, the grade might look like this, like I, I would write a grade in a circle and then I'll add the bonus points at the end, so let's say you got that. Your actual grade is an 83, but um, what you got in the test is a 78, so I would say is that number in a circle is less than a 70. You probably should see me, but before that I would say try to fix your mistakes, check with my solutions. If you realize that you still got it wrong, even though you're not in a test and you're not being timed, uh, that's something you'd want to know. Uh, come talk to me. We should figure out what went wrong and how you can improve in the future. So we'll stop there for today. Have a good weekend. Take care.